Spain's highest peak. Compared to my previous mountains, Mulassim was a roller coaster of a ride. How beautiful. It's this away from a wall. But right now, I'm not necessarily gonna do it. I'm just gonna look at it. Keep going. This here, this is how summit fever starts. I can 100% do this. This journey starts in North Portugal and I need to get to Sierra Nevada in Spain. I am loosely basing the highest points I climb off a chapter in this book where Emma Benson climbed to the highest points in all European countries, but I have doubt because there are no rules really. This is my challenge that can be individual to me. Yesterday, my friend Sophia gave me her two cents about what Spain's highest mountain is. I'm a geographical whiz. You don't need to do independent research. I'm not criticizing, but if you Google highest mountain in Spain, the first thing that comes up was this mountain in Tenerife. Canary Islands are quite solidly Spanish. Anyway, I'm only seeing this as good news. I like Tenerife, I'll come with you. Although I'm not going all the way up because it's really high. I responded to this well. I only need 30 seconds for your voice to... I will pick the rest up tomorrow before I strangle you. Because this here is a video about mainland Spain's highest peak not Tenerife. Five and a half hours sleep and I'm not going to bed tonight. Turns out at 6am I have a tendency to give a very monotone monologue. This been now with Granada. Oh my god my phone has not charged. Sometimes when I'm pressed for time I then take more time to do stuff. I'm catching a train to Fondau because it's a bigger station that has connections to Lisbon. Something I like about Portugal is that older gentlemen seem to congregate at coffee bars and Portuguese stations. Always standing, they never sit. My second observation is that the train windows are always dirty, but that's probably because it doesn't rain much, unless I'm visiting that is. By car, it would take me eight to nine hours to make this journey, but by public transport, it was not a piece of cake. Incidentally, Lisbon apparently has the best cake in the world. It was nice. Okay, deep breath. From Vail de Prazeres, it was a train to Fondue, then a train to Lisbon, then 10 hours exploring, then a coach up to Madrid, and then a coach back down to Granada, and then a bus to Cabalera, taking a total of 36 hours. The highlights were- My leg hurt the most today after any mountain. The food in Lisbon, metropolitan Cork seats. For comparison, these are the London Underground seats. Evidence is why I'm so appreciative of these beauties. Night coach next to a nun. The wonders of Madrid. The coach from Granada to Capriellia. Seeing the village tucked into the side of the mountain. Then getting to the front door. The best place I've ever stayed. There's not much in the way of kindling. So I don't know how to work this. I can't eat not next to the fire. A sleep-deprived euphoria overcame me. I can't go over how happy I am. I can't even wait to do the cleaning. I'm gonna enjoy cleaning. Potatoes, pepper up the mountain. That's my plan. That did not happen. I've got a dust. Uh, and then I crashed. Everyone recommends that you take a sleeping bag to this mountain hut because it was a bit vague on whether or not it give you warm enough it's stuff. It's huge. But beggars can't be cheap. Sleeping bag turned out not to be necessary. I needed a sleeping liner, meaning I could have avoided hefting this bag thousands of feet. Then the mood took a turn. You're so anxious. Uh, so smiling is a coping mechanism. Insanely so. I don't know why, I just need to do it. It's nearly one o'clock, so I'm just gonna leave. Hopefully once I'm on the road, I'll be like, oh, I feel good. But right now, just go. Capilera is the second highest village in Spain and it is walking distance to Molasen. Doubting whether or not I can do this. Panic inside me was escalating so I stopped and tried to breathe. But I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. But I've never been very good at breathing so I settled for distracting myself. I can see snow exhausted after 500 meters. Pretty sweaty and sweat helps with anxiety. This will be the highest mountain that I've done so far. And it is the highest peak in the Iberian Peninsula. I also haven't brought any toilet paper with me to use at the hut. I've also had diarrhea this morning. Hmm, can't be helped. I can 100% do this. I don't know what my anxiety was about. That little piece of hair. I just needed to get out. I am okay and I'm enjoying it. It's getting noticeably cooler. So this is the power station. This is the trail starting point. Day one was a hike from Cabalera to the electricity station and then a hike up to the mountain hut a total of 11 kilometers however pause the screen if you want to see my excuse i mean caveats 
With three and a half hours of sunlight remaining, I was at 1,600 and something meters. Refugee Pokwia, where I'm sleeping, is at like 2,500. I've got to go 900 meters up. I'm getting sweaty again. Actually, so can't tell you why my jump is still on. It's so much longer than you would have thought for the distance. I can confirm, I've barely made any progress on the map. My heart sinks slightly when you have to walk downhill a lot. Losing all the elevation I've just gained. Just have to go back up mountain gate i couldn't stay long to watch the capricorns with only 2.5 hours of sunlight remaining so i'm tired okay brace yourselves a bit lost doesn't really seem to be a trail and i'm oh. Almost certainly. I mean, is that the trail? Some people have walked here, unless it's animals. With that poignant observation, let's just fast forward 20 minutes. A couple of meters away from a wild boar. It's so big, like the width of three Shetland ponies and taller than Shetland. It was humongous. I'm nearly six foot. Huge. That was scary. Don't know what I'd do if it didn't run away from me. The amount of brambles. Ah. Oh, I'm stuck. Ah. What bloody way do I go? Crawling on my hand through bramble bush. So, uh, find the trail. Stop it! The thing is, is I can't go back the way I came to shred some brambles. If I kept along the river, look a path. My idiocy in getting lost came from thinking that this little shape represented an arrow pointing upwards. It does not. Two hours to sunset. An hour and a half of sunlight left. This is heavy and I am finding this tough. Half an hour of sunlight left. I don't really have the energy. But I rallied for the last leg. So happy I'm here. I'm so grateful. Me having my arse on show mountain is going to be a thing. That is the bottom of my ice axe. I now have a hole somewhere. A wonderful reoccurring theme. Fit two hands for it. If I'd have known, I could have put a jacket around my waist. So my walking footage from the next day looks like this. Fantastic. Look at that. Which way? Getting way above clouds now. Pink rods that I'm following. I think I have a kilometer to go. Just keep, keep going. That's the camp. I can see it. Light shining. So I'm not telling a ghost story. The light bulb didn't work. There's another girl here called Rose. It's Rose. We were the only two staying in the mountain hut. That's Rose, really that's nice. such a good name. This appetizer didn't appeal to her. Uh, apricots with chocolate. <laughs> no, it's not, it's Rose. not a fan. Wonderful, she's from Holland. We talked all evening and she certainly made an impact on me. So much so that I often think, what would Rose do? The guy who mans the hut that I'm staying in is that it's very icy. He strongly advises that we don't do mahasan. This advice makes me ashamed of my future actions. I've come all this way. I'm not necessarily going to do it. I'm just going to look at it. This here, this is how summit fever starts. Summit fever is when you're so fixated on reaching the top that you fail to react appropriately to dangerous conditions. My judgment was clouded by how close I was to achieving my goal. I had flown from London, traveled through the night from Portugal to Spain, and then strained myself getting two thirds of the way up. In that moment, it was really hard to rationalize going home. I'm gonna go look at the mountain, just gonna look. But I needed a closer look than this. From here, the approach I think I tried to do was the north face. Initially, we just had to follow the river upwards. Since Rose didn't have crampons, we were hiking as far as we could together before parting ways. There, I can see some rock. See? Can be. How far that peak is? Not really trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, I really want to do this now. Go, go further, then you feel comfortable coming back. Me and Rose are walking up and then separating. But right now, it's just gentle snow. Goodbye, Rose. Goodbye. As Rose is travelling in her van. 3,000 metres now. 10 past 11. I'm so close to the top. I don't know whether or not I'm imagining it, but I think I can tell the difference in my ability to breathe. Although it is already established, I'm not skilled at breathing. There's no more track to follow. I'm going to give it a kiss. I think I need to go about 400 metres up. I'll give myself an hour and a half. It's pretty steep. <laughs> and I won't film. I don't think that that's the peak. I think it's beyond that. I was unable to capture the climbing upwards. It's been the first time I've been able to stop in a while because that right there, it doesn't look steep, but it's very steep. Okay, so I've overused the word steep. It's just a sheet of ice. 300 meters to go. I went up another 150 meters before. I can care. It is too dangerous. It's just so icy. So I'm gonna head back. I was 200 meters from the top and I think I could do it, but I also think I could die coming down and I'm alone. It hurts. I was trying to go up there. Maybe I go around and up. I'm just gonna see what it's like. 
it didn't lead to where I needed to go. In hindsight, the self side may have been more achievable, but I should have done more research. As my friend Rob would say, proper power planning prevents piss poor performance. Getting hot. I have a hole in my legging. I didn't give up easily, but I wasn't stupid. I think I was a bit stupid. Can't believe I lost another glove though. But I was a lot less moody about it this time. Lost my lovely blue gloves. She's not happy. And I now realise I shouldn't have gone up as far as I did. And I can only smile because I'm okay. It's a lesson learned. So I left my big bag somewhere down there by the river. 30 minutes later. I thought it'd be round this corner, but it's not. Louise! It's a little like when people have a car and they forget where they park it. I've forgotten where I've parked my bag. See it! For you! On the way back, I went to try and find the mountain hut steward. As I couldn't find him, I left him a note apologising and telling him we were okay. I took a longer but easier route home, and in comparison to my journey there, it felt like a walk in the park. Only faced minor hiccups of having no battery life left on anything. Got lost because it was dark. And by the time I arrived back, I was... Too exhausted to stand up. I haven't been able to sleep much, but I'm gonna go out into sunshine. The experience of Mulasin feels a bit like getting this key stuck in the door. A little jarring and requires more patience. Still gonna cross it off my list because I climbed but not summited it. And then I'll just write it again on my list with attempt two. Crossing off Mulasin and writing it again helps me have more judgment and less fever. And that was that, time to go home. Till next time, Mulasin. <laughs>